Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur podcast. Today, I am joined by the incredible Joy Gadsden. And the topic we are discussing today is one that we need to hear over and over and over. It's just finding joy in the journey. So with that being said, Joy, welcome into the Motivated Mompreneur podcast. It is such a pleasure to have you with me. Amy, thank you so much for having me. This is this is so exciting. This is so exciting. I'm so excited. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You are so welcome. I (laughs) connected with Joy earlier this year at a local conference. And when I heard her speak and just saw her passion, I'm like, I need to get this woman (laughs) on my podcast and just share with the world the joy she literally brings to the table because we need more of that. Joy, Tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. Well, I am a mother of three grown children. Yay for the grown kids. Uh, (laughs) um, I'm a mother of three grown kids. I have and also a pet parent of two dogs, uh, Bentley and Dina, which are are my loves. Um, My my regular gig, as I call it, is I work for a local labor union. Um, so that was that's that's kind of far different from what I'm doing. But my my passion and my heart is c- encouraging, motivating. Um, so I'm a speaker, a writer. I also do small business coaching, teaching entrepreneurial classes. So you name it, I kind of I kind of dabble in it all. Oh my gosh, I love it because it's impactful. The work that you're doing, that you're following the joy, you're you're embracing that journey, and that's something a lot of us forget. You know, we just mm-hmm. get so caught up in the hustle of the to-do list, the striving for the future. What was the turning point for you that you woke up and you're like, wait, wait a minute, I've got to have more joy in this journey? That's a really good question because the turning point for me, I don't think it was one big aha moment. I think it was a lot of little pay attention moments that Mm -hmm. turned into one big aha moment. So to answer that question, what it was for me, my big aha moment is I had been working at a job in transportation for almost 15 years. And eight of the 15, I was the last eight of those 15, I was the um, third shift supervisor. So when I took the position, I was married. A year into having the position, I got divorced. And so now I'm working third shift, raising two kids, right? And my kids were young. I think they were like, nine and 10, when I took my two youngest ones were nine and 10, when I took the position. And so I just kept saying, it's gotta be more, it's gotta be more. I'm missing my kids, I'm, I'm missing it. I'm missing everything about them. I gotta do something different. And so a friend of mine recommended me to read The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. And if you haven't read it, read it. It is a great book, it is impactful. She drops a lot of good nuggets and a lot of good gems um, in that book. And I read that book and I said, ah, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing my yes. I'm missing my why. So that was in 2019. And in 2020, I said, I'm going to write for a full year and I'm going to share what I've written with friends and family. And what really turned out to be just me saying yes, which I know you've heard me say that before, right? Saying yes and encouraging people. I really actually encouraged myself. Had I not said yes, I would not have gotten to podcasting myself. I would not have written a book. I would not have done all of the yes things that have happened in my life at this at this point in time. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely beautiful. And saying yes, in doing so, how did you make sure to stay aligned with your boundaries so that you didn't become overwhelmed, overworked? How did you navigate that? Because I, I can just sees, you know, some listeners going, well, well, if I say yes to everything, I'm not going to sleep at night then. So how did you navigate that? What does that look like? What it looks like for me is I always say my boundaries aren't, boundaries aren't for you, for other people. They're for you. They're for you to say, how far are you willing to go? 
So when I set my boundaries and trust me, I'm a people person. I'm a people pleaser. I like to say yes to any and everything and turn around and say, Joy, now girl, you know, you shouldn't say yes to that. What are you doing? <laughs> girl, you know, you don't have a bandwidth to do that. So I had to purposely say, number one, what's important to me and, and prioritize my priorities, right? What's important yeah. to me. I already missed out on my family. I'm not missing out on anything else with my kids. So that was a boundary. If it interferes with my kids, mm, I can't do it. And so it went for my kids and then it went to myself and then it went to my family. You know, you prioritize your priorities. And then I, then I purposely started saying no. Now, let me tell you, for someone who's a people person, no is very hard. And you know, your parents used to say when they were little, is this going to hurt me more than it hurt you? That was the truth. Like it hurt me so <laughs> to say no. But the more that I practiced the no, I was able to say yes to the things that really matter. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh. I, I was, it does. Yeah. Do you get it? I was yes. able to say yes to the things that became important, that were important, that needed to be important. The no, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not running that. I don't have the bandwidth to do that. But then my yeses became solid, impactful yeses. Oh my gosh, so good. Because by saying no, you're opening up the space and the opportunity mm -hmm. for the yeses that do provide that value to you, that are aligned with your inner morals and values and staying aligned with those boundaries. So that yes. right there is beautiful. But I like how you said too, it takes practice because I'm also a recovering people pleaser and it it's hard. <laughs> it is so hard to say that one little word because you know we get in our heads. We do. And and you know what happens because we've been so conditioned especially as mothers, especially as women, and depending on how the age of your listener, uh the listeners, we were always taught, <clears throat> excuse me, yes, 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 yes. And as women, the, the narrative is put everybody else first and put you and put you second or put you last or put you, I don't know, umpteenth, wherever you may fall, <laughs> that's where you fall, right? And so it hurt to say no. But I found out that if I wasn't saying no, I was really hurting me more. So I had to practice those no's and it was not easy. And I had, I got strange looks from friends and I got strange looks. Girl, what do you mean? No, no. <laughs> there were times, Amy, I would literally go in my mirror in my bathroom and I'd be like, okay, Joy, today is a no day. This is how you're going to practice no. And it sounds funny. <laughs> and they're probably, you guys are probably laughing at me, but it's the truth. I had to practice my no. So that way when I got it, when it became game time, right? When it was game time to really step up and say no, I was confident in my no, and I never wavered. It was no. And I love how you, you, you said you practiced, and it's in practicing in the doing that we build the confidence, and it gets mm -hmm. easier. Yes, it does. It does. Now my kids are like, Mom, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're like, you won't even let me finish. No. <laughs> no, I'm not letting you finish because it's foolish. No. I'm not doing it. No. So yes. yes, it does. It does get easier. It really does. Oh my gosh. So being a busy mom and raising mm -hmm. your kids, how did you make the time to take care of yourself amongst all of the chaos of life? You know what? In the beginning, I wasn't. If I'm being perfectly honest and transparent, I was not. And it wasn't until um, my body actually set me down. You know how your body gives you those, those cues, yeah. like sit down, you need to take care of yourself, you need to take care of yourself. And I kept saying, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Again, that people pleasing, doing for everybody else until my body decided to say, Joy, you're not sitting down, I'm going to sit you down. And right. I found that I was diagnosed in 2019 um, around that same transitional time that I was diagnosed with MS. And so it was one of those, oh, I really got to take care of me now. Because if I don't, I'm not going to be here. Right. So it was the joy, sit down, take care of yourself. Well, translation, it made those no's a little bit more impactful. It made it a little bit easier because now I had something to, uh, and it's going to sound cliche-ish, right? But I had something to live for. I got to be here for my kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got to be here for my nieces, my nephews, my mom, my dad, my sisters. You fill in the blanks, whatever else you need to be here for. 
So that was my, now I have to take care of me. It was the wake up call for me. Yeah. And isn't it funny how along the journey it does, like it'll just hit you out of nowhere, like a ton of bricks. It's like the universe knows, God knows Mm -hmm. whatever you believe in, whatever force life always has a way of playing out exactly like it should. And then you look back Mm -hmm. and you can connect those dots and it's like, oh my gosh, I, I had a wake up call. Like I wasn't taking care of myself and Mm -mm. literally like, all right, it's, it's this or that, like you don't have, a, you're not given a choice anymore. No, not at all. Not at all. And one of the things I've found with, um, having, being able to say no mm-hmm. is that, um, people respect your nose a little bit more mm-hmm. when you're able to set those boundaries and you'll find the people who are with you versus the people who aren't with you. Ooh, you'll I find like that. You know what I'm saying? You'll find those users you'll, versus the takers versus the people who are now saying, finally, she said yes. Now let's let's get behind her in her yes. And, being, and then starting to hold you accountable to saying yes. Oh, yeah. It's a exactly. Yes. And they respect you for that too. Yes. And they respect yes. those boundaries. And yeah, they get behind you and, mm-hmm. and champion you. Those are the people you want in your life, the people that are going yes. to respect those boundaries. And when you say no, not try and push you over the edge. That's absolutely. what we need. Yes, absolutely. And and what's interesting as moms, we don't really have a mom group per se. Sometimes we, well, we do and we don't, right? right. Does that make sense? We have oh, mom groups that are like, you know, the one, the mom, the mom group where they, can you do, can you do, can you do, can you do? And then you have the mom group that says, yes, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. But it's interesting when you find that group that number one, holds you accountable to your no. They praise you when you say yes, right? They're there to pick you up and lift you up if you need assistance and becomes reciprocal. It's a two-way street. And so those are the people that I have found that are in my, that are in my circle that are willing to say, now, Joy, that was foolish. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, girl, that was great. Yay, I'm so proud of you. Find those people. And if you don't have those people, it's okay to cut them off. Yeah. Because they're they're dead weight. They're like albatrosses. That's why albatrosses don't fly. They're too heavy to fly. If you're yeah. trying to fly to get to the next level, to be the best mom you can be, to be the best wife you can be, to be the best, you fill in the blank, sometimes you got to cut that dead weight. And it's painful. It hurts. But I promise you, you cut it off and you will begin to soar. Exactly. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Because I think so many times we get stuck in that comparison mode. We're always trying yes. to one-up each other. And it's like, why? Why are we doing this? Can we just champion each other? And you know what? If if that mom enjoys making everything from scratch and sending in these intricate little, you know, graham crackers that look like turkeys for thanksgiving (laughs) good for you but guess what i'm the mom that's going to go to the store and buy a little package a pre-packaged whatever i'll do me you do you i'll celebrate you celebrate me like boom like let's get out of this constant competition and comparison because there's no trophy for being the most burnt out stressed out oh it's exhausting no it's not it is very exhausting and let me just say this i will praise the parent or the mom who can clap their hands and these intricate designs and things are in fact i'm the person that says hey how much do you need can i get in on that mm-hmm. i'll buy the supplies for you because i know that's not my gift or talent right. but going back to what you said championing those people realizing that we all have different gifts and we all have different talents and i don't know why somewhere between little girl and adulthood we decided we wanted to be in competition with each other which makes zero sense at all um, but get people that will champion you. I am the champ. Girl, yes, you look good today. Oh, girl, come on, dress. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those kind of, yes, that's beautiful. You look beautiful. Fix, fix your, fix the crown. Fix, fix our crowns as women. Uplift each other. Hey, I can't do what you can do, but I can pour into you. How can I pour into you? So going, that competition, no more competition. How can I pour into you? Tell me what I need to do to champion you. Uh, couldn't if you can just imagine a world with more of that wouldn't it be like the most beautiful uplifting oh, 
place ever. I mean, this just, and we have the power to do that. We can create these changes. We can change these narratives. We can be a part of that change. And Joy, something you did to contribute to the change is you wrote a book and you touched a little I, bit upon it earlier, but tell us more about your book that you wrote. So my book is entitled Joy for the Journey, which is 90 Days of Motivation and Inspiration. Um, it is just 90 snippets, ideas, thoughts. If you read the book, I hope you do, and I hope you did, and I'll tell you where to get it later. But if you get the book, you learn a lot about me. Um, I tell a lot of stories from my, my mom and dad, my sisters are in it, my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, you know, just family is very important to me. So that is joy for the journey, just finding joy in the journey. And I think sometimes when you hear motivation and inspiration, you automatically think, oh, here comes another religious something. Now, let me say this. It's not that I don't believe because I do. Absolutely. Grew up in a church, preacher's kid, the whole nine. Know the whole Bible back and forth. But I wanted to reach people who may not have had that foundation, that have been, um, for lack of a better word, churched, right? Or who may just be disenfranchised with organized religion. It doesn't matter. Everybody needs to be motivated. Everybody needs to be able to be inspired. So that was the purpose behind Joy for the Journey. And that's why it's written the way that it's written. Um, just snippets, just thoughts, giving a different perspective on how to look at life. Oh my gosh. And it's absolutely beautiful. I have read the book and <laughs> I highly encourage everyone listening. You need to get your hands on it because it is. It's those short little snippets that really bring you back and you have space on the opposite page yes. to journal your thoughts, to just get it out of your head, how this is impacting you, how this can mm -hmm. relate to your life. And it is just absolutely beautifully written. And Joy, you are actually going to be sharing with us a passage out of the book. Would you mind doing that? I sure will. So this is actually one of my favorites. It's called Sunflowers. Sunflowers have an interesting story. When they are young, they follow the path of the sun. When the sun can no longer be seen, they turn and face each other to gather energy and strength because they have not yet learned how to harness the, the store, uh, harness and store the sun's energy for cloudy days. Here's the question for today. How much more could we accomplish if we, like young sunflowers in our times of lack, uncertainty or weakness, turn toward each other instead of away from each other, isolating ourselves? So here's my challenge for you today. Know you are not alone. Lean and depend on your source of spiritual strength, friends and family who have proven themselves to be true. Share their energy and strength. Allow them to hold you up in times of need until you can harness the power of the sun once again. Oh my gosh. It's, it's just beautiful. I mean, the whole entire <laughs> book is things like that. And it just... It's so impactful. I still remember one of your stories towards the beginning of the book when you were teaching your daughter how to drive, you know, and oh she's got her, her one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. And it's like, okay, but it, it relates to life because we can't mm -hmm. constantly have our foot on the gas and the brake at the same time, but we need to have that balance of it. We need to learn mm -hmm. when, when do you throttle forward? When do you slow it down? And I mean, mm -hmm. it's just absolutely impactful and beautiful and they're just short bite-sized nuggets too and you know i never knew that about sunflowers so i mean i, I learned something too but <laughs> i i love how you relate it to life because we aren't alone and if no, we we're not share our strengths with one another the the journey gets so much mm -hmm. easier mm -hmm. yes Joy. yes you are a true joy to the world. You are just such a oh, light you. and an inspiration. Where can we learn more about you? So you can learn more about me um, from my website. Um, you can purchase my book at www.joy4, and that's the word for F-O-R, journey.com. Um, you can also follow me on my social media, which is on Instagram. It's joy underscore four. Again, the word for F-O-R underscore journey. Uh, same on Facebook, Joy for Journey, which is all together. 
You can also follow me on TikTok. I'm new to the TikTok game, so y'all bear with me. Uh, but you can find me on TikTok, and that is Joy, the letter for journey. So Joy for journey. And you can always feel free to email me, and that is Joy at Joy for journey. Um, and you can listen to my podcast and by the same name, see the theme, Joy for Joy for the journey. I'm I'm keeping it. Branding, Perfect. branding people, yes, branding it is. together. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Joy for the Journey is the name of my podcast. Um, and in that, you get a little bit more uh, of me. It's like some some stories. I have interviews. You can find that on Spotify. You can find it on Anchor. I think iTunes as well. So anywhere that you listen to your podcast, you can, you can find it. Oh my goodness. Well, be sure to check out Joy. And Joy, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to just share with our listeners today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was a little different being on this side of the of the, of the microphone, but I kind of liked it. I kind of liked it. Uh, but thank you so much again. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope your listeners can find a little bit of joy out of any of something that when I said today. Absolutely. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 